Hello, beautiful child of God. I am so glad that you decided to tune into this message today. Many of you have been with this ministry for months, weeks, some of you years even, and you haven't missed a message since then. I am glad that the Lord has sat you under this ministry and that you tune in every day. I call you blessed, and I'm not just saying that out of the words of Shannon. I'm saying that because in Galatians chapter 3, the word of God says that if you are in faith, you receive the blessing of Abraham. You receive the promises of Abraham. You have an inheritance because you are blessed, says the Lord. And this is why I call you blessed, because it is true absolutely true and the more that i say it the more that you hear it and again to stand on the word of god you begin to believe it and not only do you begin to believe it but you begin to see the blessings of god manifest in your life it's very important to sit under people who speak the word of god over you it's very important to sit under people who not only speak the word of God over you, but they believe it and they stand with you on it. Because by doing that, you begin to see your life change. You begin to see things happen in your life that aligns with scripture. There are many people who have been sitting under this ministry or have been listening to this, these messages for months or years. And as a result of it and applying what it is that I talk about through these messages, using the word of God, they begin to see things shift in their life. They begin, it starts with the mind first. They begin to uh, change on the inside, change the way they're thinking, change the words that they're saying, change the actions that they're doing. And as a result, they're seeing things shift in their life. They're making changes that they never would have made otherwise. The Lord is moving in their life in a way, a powerful way that he was not able to do before because it's according to your faith that it should be done into you. And here at Shannon Holmes Ministries, we increase faith, release the gift of faith through the spirit of God. And I think it's very crucial that you root yourself here, that you begin to allow the seeds that I'm sowing in your mind and your heart take root so that they do not fall on stony ground. And as a result, you begin to produce fruit as a, as a result of that. So I'm glad that you're here. Today, before we get into this message, I think it's going to be a quick one, but every time I say that, it always ends up being quite long. Um, but I want to bind up right now in, in the name of Jesus, the spirit of pride, because we're going to be addressing pride today. We're going to be addressing pride. We're going to be addressing um, a very specific kind of person. And so this message isn't going to be for everyone. Do I want it to be for everyone? Absolutely. Does the Lord want everyone to hear this message and receive it? Absolutely. Will everyone receive it though? No, because there's a spirit of pride that rises up in people. And not only that, there are some people who are just not in a place where they're able to hear it and receive it. And I pray for you. I pray for you that God opens your ears, he opens your heart, and that he gets you to that place, you get to that place, to where you're able to receive a message like this. Today's message is going to be a powerful one. It's uh, specifically for those who have been in a low place, and, or maybe you're not in a low place, but you're in a place where it's, it's not the lowest you've ever been, right? You've been in a, low, a little bit lower, but you know that there's some circumstances that are playing out in your life. There's some situations that are playing out in your life that you don't like. It may just be in one area, the area of your finances. It may be in the area of your relationships. It may be in the area of your health. You don't like your weight. You don't like how you're, you don't like the food that you're eating. You don't like your diet. You don't like your habits concerning your temple. You don't like your mindset right? You don't, maybe you're struggling with depression or anxiety. You don't like how much debt you're in, right? You don't like how you're managing your money. You don't like how things are going in your relationships, your romantic relationship, your friendships, your family relationships among your family members. There's just some things in your life that you don't like and you're able to humble yourself enough. Humility is the key, y'all. You're able to humble, humble yourself enough to say that you got yourself there. You put yourself there. And here's the thing. It takes humility to do that. Pride will make you, hear, hear me when I say this, pride will make a person go to Lord and say, Lord, why did you do this to me? Why did you put me in this relationship even though things are not working? Why did you 
Why did you put me in this new home even though it's about to foreclose? Why did you why why did you put me in this area where there's nothing but unhealthy food? Why did you do this to my body? Why did you allow my mind to be raided with all of these unhealthy thoughts? Why did you do this to me, God? It takes a very prideful person. We're going to come up against that spirit of pride. And there may be some people who listen to this message and they get a little offended. They feel some pride and offense rising up in them as I begin to move on and, and continue with this message. But we're coming against the spirit of pride head on today. Come on, somebody. But it takes... It, it takes a very prideful person to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm in this situation that I don't like because of you. Why did you allow this bad thing to happen to me? Do you know that the word of God says there will be people who go to the Lord on that day, on judgment day and say, Lord, Lord, I did all these things in your name. Haven't I done all these things in your name? And I'm going to bring up that scripture because I want you to read what the thought process of a prideful person is like. Give me a moment. It is Matthew chapter uh, 7, verse 22. And I want you to go here with me because I want to read it to you. Because we're, we're attacking, confronting, and coming up against the spirit of pride heavy in this message. Matthew chapter 7 verse 22 and you can go there with me okay here it is not everyone who says to me lord lord will enter the kingdom of heaven there's a reason for that and it's because there's a spirit of pride there the most prideful person that's ever existed was satan he said i will exalt mine high above the Lord. It's all about me, me, me. Who stands before the Lord and talks about themselves, telling God who they are? God knows who you are. God knows you better than you know yourself. But yet the Lord says there is a person that will come before him on that day with that spirit in their heart. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but the one who does the will of my father who's in heaven. And he says, many on that day will say to me, not just one person, he's saying many people. There are many people who will say this to the Lord. And there are people out there today with the same spirit in their heart, the same mindset. Many will come to me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, we do not prophesy or did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name. And then will I declare to them, I never knew you depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. That's Matthew chapter seven, verse 21 through 23. And the reason I wanna read that to you is because we're gonna be talking about the spirit of pride today and I'm gonna come up against it heavy. I bind it right now and I cast it out in the name of Jesus. You have no place in their hearts. Those who are yielded to the spirit of the Lord do not want you there. So now you are there illegally and I call you out because you are evicted. You are evicted. Continue to listen to this message because there's something in it for you. So that's what it sounds like to be a prideful person is to go before the Lord and tell the Lord about you. When the Lord is saying, no, he knows you. So there are many of us who are able to actually, though, humble ourselves before the Lord. And if you're not able to, you will be today after hearing this message. Humble yourself before the Lord and say, Lord, I have not done everything right and by your word. I have not honored and been a good steward over my finances. I have not honored and been a good steward over my body, my temple, my mind. I have not honored and been a good steward over the relationships and the people you've sent into my life. Are you able to humble yourself before the Lord and admit that? Admit that the things you don't like in your life are and may be because of your own doing, because of your own ignorance, right? Because of your own the things that you put yourself in, the things that you have, things you fail to do. You fail to get knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And if you're able to humble yourself and do that, I'm going to tell you what God says about a person with a mind and a heart like that. If you're able to humble yourself before the Lord and admit 
that God, these things in my life that I don't like are playing out because of me. You can invite God in, but I'm gonna show you what the Lord does when a person is able to humble themselves in that way before the Lord. Go with me to James chapter four, verse six. It says, but he gives more grace. Wherefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. So if you're able to humble yourself before the Lord and say, Lord, I have not done well by the things that you've trusted me with. I have not done well with my body, my, these relationships, my money. If you're able to humble yourself before the Lord, it says God gives that person grace. What is grace? It's a period in time where you receive the favor of God. It's almost like a grace period where you receive extra time. All grace will abound towards you according to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, where the word of God says he'll make all grace abound towards you. Meaning he'll give you, even though you have not dealt well with these areas of your life, even though you're in a place where you don't like your, the way your finances look, you don't like how much debt you're in, you don't like how things are playing out in your friendships, your romantic relationships, your marriage, your body, your temple. It says that he will give you grace. He'll make all grace abound towards you. So what that means is that God will set it up to where because you've humbled yourself, you have favor over a set period of time to make that thing right, supernatural favor. He'll divinely turn it all around and make it work for your good. He'll give you grace because you were able to come to him and, and uh, humble yourself concerning these things, repent and admit, Lord, I didn't do right by these things, but I'm I'm coming to you and I'm admitting that I was ignorant, I didn't know, or maybe I, maybe I willingly, on purpose, did not do right by these things, but I'm coming to you now, Lord, and I'm saying, I repent, I turn it around, and I go the other direction, and the way of your word, the way of your will, Lord God, the things that you have for me. I change my mindset, I change my habits, I change the words that I'm speaking, I change my language, I speak the language of faith, right? I change my behavior. I change my entire life to align with your word. He'll give you more grace according to James chapter four, verse six. If you're able to humble yourself. The Lord does say that many people though will not be able to. And so that's why I said that there's some people who will listen to this message and instead of humbling themselves to receive from God, they get more prideful and, and they get more puffed up inside. And it says, according to James chapter four, verse six, God will resist that person. There will not be grace extended to them. But I believe that that's not you. I don't believe that's you because you wouldn't be listening to me right now. You wouldn't have even made it this far. So I want to um, expand on um, a certain parable within the word of God, because this is really going to speak to you concerning your situation that you don't like in your life, whether that be you don't like that you're in a lot of debt, you don't like your finances, you don't like how things are happening in your relationships, you don't like your body, how things are playing out with your health. I want to address that area of your life that you don't like, but you are humble enough to say, I did this to myself. So first, before I get there, I want to share with you a beautiful redeeming message and word of the Lord concerning that situation. You know what it is. It may be all of those areas. It may be your finances, your health, and your relationships, or it may just be one area. But what the, what the word of the Lord is saying that he says all throughout his word is that you are alive and not only you're alive, but it's his will for you to be alive and be alive more abundantly. So I need you to know, and you could write this down, that you are going to a high place. God is not only saying that you're going to a higher place, but he's guiding you there. He's taking you by the hand and he's guiding you there. There's no step that you take in the Lord that moves you back. It always moves you forward and up. No step that you're, you take in the Lord is gonna shift you backwards. It'll always take you higher and forward. You're going up you're not going down, you're up, you're not down. So hear me when I say this, it doesn't matter if you've been lower than where you are right now, it does not matter if you have seen less than what you have right now, 
I will tell you this and you can hang on to these words by the Spirit of God today that you are the lowest you will ever be. You were in the lowest place you will ever be because you're going up from here. You're going up from here. You're not going down. I speak this over you today. Will you receive it? Can you believe it? Because it is true. It is true. Hang on to the Lord. Stay in him and you will always go up and forward. This is the lowest you'll ever be. This is the most stagnant you'll ever be. I speak this over you. So um, I want to take you to uh, Luke chapter 15. And I'm going to move my... I'm gonna move my laptop here so that my uh, Bible is positioned properly. I'm gonna be reading from the ESV. I wanna take you to Luke chapter 15, <laughs> verse um, 11 through 31. And you can actually read this on your own time. Many of you know this, this is the parable of the prodigal son. I wanna break this down to you because we see here the shift of a person who is once very prideful and then comes to the end of himself and he realizes wait a second i'm in need right i'm in need i thought i could do it on my own but look where that got me look where i've ended up look where my finances are look where my health is at he's eating in the pig pen y'all look where my mental is at he's came to the end of himself but we're going to talk about how he got there what that took and what happened as a result of him humbling himself what God did for him and what other people, how they begin to respond. I want to put it that way as a result of what God did for him. We're going to break it down because in this parable, you're going to begin to see what God is going to do for you. And this parable, this parable, we see this theme playing out all throughout scripture. I'm going to compare it to another story that Jesus shares with us as proof that the Lord is going to give you grace. And he's going to continue to lift you up higher because you chose to humble yourself and you put out that ugly, nasty spirit of pride. So first, I want you to understand that in the story of the parable, the, not parable, in the parable of the prodigal son, what we see here is that for the prodigal son, it got so bad for him that he was begging to eat with the pigs. He was begging to eat with the pigs. How many of you? or in a place in your life where you were a place in your life where you're doing things that you normally would not do. You know that it's beneath you. You know that you're better than that. You know that you deserve to be at a better position. You know that you deserve to be carrying yourself better. You know that you're better than that. You know that there's more for you, but yet you find yourself in a low place. You find yourself in a place where you know you should not be. Let me make it more relevant to you. You know that you shouldn't have gotten yourself in that much debt, but you find yourself wrestling with bondage concerning finances. You know that you shouldn't be that size. You know you shouldn't be overweight. You know that you shouldn't be underweight. Those of you who are struggling with being underweight, you know that you shouldn't be, your health shouldn't be where it's at, but yet you find yourself there. You know that you shouldn't be hanging out with with these people, these people that are in places, foul places that you should not be. You know you're better than that. You know you're better than where they're at. And I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. I'm just telling it like it is. You're better than those people. And when they come into the Lord, they'll become better too. But right now, you know that you're too good for that. You're too good to be in those places, too good to be hanging out with those people, right? But yet you find yourself there. You find yourself in environments where you know you shouldn't be. You find yourself wrestling with health problems that are manageable that you know you shouldn't be wrestling with. You find yourself battling with debt and financial issues that you know you shouldn't be dealing with. But yet you, find, you, you found yourself there. The prodigal son knew that he shouldn't have been eating with the pigs. He knew where he came from. He knew that his father had much bread in his house. He knew that his father had servants and was living a wealthy lifestyle, but yet he found himself in the pig pen. And listen to what it says in Luke chapter 15, verse 17. It says, but when he came to himself, he came to himself. And this is where you're at right now. How do I know that? Because you're listening to this. You have come to yourself because here's the thing. A lot of times for a very long time, we can be in these places, these places where we're not supposed to be. We can be 
and friendship groups where, with people doing things that we're not supposed to be doing, with people we're not supposed to be with. We can be in a low lump sum of debt. We could be in a very low place with our health and our mind, but we're normalizing it. We haven't come to the end of ourselves yet. We haven't come to ourselves yet. So we think that what we're dealing with is normal. We're okay with it. We're comfortable in that place, but there's a time coming and it's here for many of you where you will say to yourself, wait a second. Like it says in Luke chapter 15, verse seven, this is not who I am. You will come to yourself who you really are because you're not that. You're not like them. You're not meant to be in debt. You're not meant to be struggling financially. You're not meant to be having these health issues. There's a time where you will come to yourself, your identity, and you'll know, wait a second. He said, it says in Luke chapter 15, verse 17, how many of my father's hired servants, meaning these are people his father are paying, hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. You come to the end of yourself and you say, wait a second, why am I in this state when I have a father, a perfect father who is outlined in his word, y'all, his word, his promises to me. He says in Galatians chapter three, if you are in faith, you were of Abraham's seed and you receive the blessing of Abraham. Come on, somebody. You receive the promises of all the promises he outlines to you in Deuteronomy 28. That's for you because you are Abraham's seed, according to Galatians chapter three. That's you, child of God. God has many blessings for you. You are in covenant with him. And there comes a time today where you come to yourself and you say, wait a second, why am I dealing with this? It's you coming up to a higher place. It's you going up and not down because that's God's will for you. And it has been from the very beginning. So he comes to the end of himself, but it takes him a minute because he's wallowing in that. He's wallowing in that lifestyle with those people in the pig pen, right? And he doesn't have a revelation about who he is. He doesn't have a revelation about who his father is. It takes a minute for it to click. Wait a second. My father has made servants. And not only that, my father has more than enough bread, he says, but I perish here with hunger. Your father who is in heaven, child of God, hear me. Philippians chapter 4, 19 says, he will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You will not go without. You will not go without. Get this revelation, stand on it and believe it. Believe it because it is true for you. I'm going to jump up to Luke chapter 15, verse 14. It says, and when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country and he began to need. He began to need. You know, a few messages back, it's titled, you will be a lender and not a borrower. Go listen to it if you're listening to this and you haven't heard that. I encourage you to go listen to it. I read to you uh, Psalms chapter 82, verse four through seven, that first word, verse, it says, deliver the poor and the needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. And that word deliver there is there on purpose. It doesn't say give to the poor and the needy, which yes, we are to do that. Don't confuse my words here and take this out of context, but we're sticking to Psalms right now, Psalms chapter 82, verse uh, four through seven. It says, deliver the poor and the needy. Why is the word of God telling us to deliver the poor and the needy? Because they need deliverance. They need deliverance from a mindset, a lack of mindset. They need deliverance from that confusion, demonic and wicked mindset. Read the rest of that chapter. It'll explain why they need deliverance. They need deliverance from a mindset. The, uh, the prodigal son needed deliverance from a mindset. He needed to come into revelation about who he is, who he's the son of, what his inheritance actually is, his identity. Wait a second, he says, I have more than enough bread at my father's house, but yet I'm here in dealing with hunger. You need a revelation about who you are, of who you are. And so it says that he was in need, but if he had Psalms chapter 28 in his tool belt, I'm telling him, telling you, you all, that he would have knew immediately, I need deliverance. I need to deliver myself. I need someone to deliver me. I need the revelation and light of God. I need to be delivered from this mindset and this state of being. So it says he came to himself. He needed a revelation of who he was in God. And then here's the thing. 
when he got that revelation, it says that he arose and he went to his father. It takes humility to do that. We're going to talk about that. He arose and went to his father and listen to what his father did for him. This is how God is with you. I'm going to read it to you. This is what God is going to do for you concerning that financial situation, concerning the debt you're in, concerning that relationship, concerning your health. This is what God is going to do for you. It's already in the works right now. Why? Because you've humbled yourself before the Lord. Remember, we're standing on the basis of James chapter 4, verse 6, where it says, but he gives more grace. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. This is what grace looks like. Go with me to Luke chapter 15, verse 22. It says, but the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe. Come on, somebody. This is what God has for you because you have humbled yourself before him. There are those who are proud and they're dealing with pride and they can't do that. And so they eat the bread of the prideful. But you are humble because you're here, you're listening to this, and you have had a heart change. It says, but the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. The best of the best for you. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to celebrate. God celebrates all the hosts of heavens and the angels. They celebrate for you when you decide to humble yourself and go before the Lord and say, Lord, I thought I had it all figured out. I'm in need now. I actually don't have it all figured out. I'm coming back home, Lord God. I'm coming, in, I'm coming to you. I'm going back to your word, which is my foundation and which is my truth. I'm coming back to you, Lord God. I put it before your feet. I humble myself before you and I say, I need you, Lord God, my perfect father, who has all that I could ever need. There is no lack in you. There is no lack in you, Lord God. And so I come to you to get all of my needs met. This is what the prodigal son had to do. And it took him coming to himself to realize that. It takes humility to do that. It does. So the best of the best for his son, and there was a celebration put on for him. The host of heaven begin to celebrate for you, for you. Then it says, I want to skip down to Luke chapter 15, verse 29. This is his brother, right? The older son. And the reason why I want to read this to you is because not everyone is, and I need you to realize this. And no, I'm not doing this to talk bad about people. I'm, I'm doing this to tell you what's real according to the word of God. Not everyone is happy that you've humbled yourself because they're still wrestling with the spirit of pride. Not everyone wants you to humble yourself before the Lord and come to God because they have some ugly spirit of pride still brewing in them. Not everyone wants to celebrate with you from when God begins to turn things around in your life. Why? Because they want to constantly remind you of where you were. They want to constantly remind, constantly remind you that you were eating in the pig pen. They want to constantly remind you of the old you, the old mindset. They're not wanting to celebrate with you. And here's what God does with those people. He still addresses them with love. He does. But they need deliverance as well. It takes a lot, of, a lot more humility to repent. And this is why those who do repent and humble themselves, they get the best of the best. And God doesn't look at all the mistakes that you made and say, you deserve less because you've made this mistake. No, if you're able to humble yourself before the Lord and say, Lord, I messed up, I repent, I thought I knew, but I didn't. I need you to come into my finances and you to come into the, my relationships, friendships and my health and turn it around, Lord God, make it work for my good. Do what only you know how to do. He gives all the more grace to people who can do that because it takes a lot more. It takes a lot of humility to admit that you're wrong and to turn back and repent than to constantly walk in the Lord and never go astray because you never know what it you, you never know what it means to humble yourself because you've always been in this high place right high place it's the very place where this, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were constantly depending on their routines thinking that they were always in this high place they were doing everything right but they lacked the spirit of God right lack the spirit of God, doing everything right according to the book, according to religious standards. But they got to this really high place in their mind to where they thought that they were able to determine 
who is God and who has not rejected Jesus when he came on the scene. That's a whole other message for another day, but it takes a lot of humility to admit you were wrong and turn back. And because of that humility in the Lord, he makes grace abound towards you all the more, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. So I want to read to you uh, Luke chapter 15, verse 29. It says, but he answered his father, this is the brother. Look, these many years I have served you. So there are many people who will say, I've been in the church for 20 years, 30 years. I've been in the church for 40 years serving the Lord. How is this person going to only be serving the Lord for 10 years, three years, one year? And yet it seems like God is doing more for them than he's done for me. Because that person has a humble heart. It's a heart posture. God looks at the heart. There's something in, you, you could be serving the Lord for 30 years, but there's a spirit of pride there. He says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 22, there'll be many people who come to him on, on that day and say, Lord, haven't I done all this in your name? Haven't I served in your name? Haven't I cast out demons in your name? And he's going to say to those people, in spite of how many years they have claimed to serve him, depart from me, I've never know, knew you. There will be people who have only served the Lord for one year and make it through those gates on Judgment Day. Why? Because their heart is humble. They've humbled themselves before the Lord. So it says, this is his brother. Look, these many years I have served you and I've never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat. It's all about me, right? That I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, son, you were always with me and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. Can you be glad for your brother and sister in Christ, right? There are many people who won't be able to do that for you, but can you do that for others? And as a result, that's you uh, continuing to humble yourself and God will make all grace abound towards you because of that. It's a heart posture. It's a posture of the heart. But you also have to realize that not everyone can and will be happy for you, right? They're, they'll, they'll always try to remind you of who you were, that you were in the pig pen, right? That you squandered everything. That's who you were. That's not who you are. You're going up, not down. God is taking you to a high place, a high place. He'll never remind you of who you were, but he'll always speak to who you are. That's how you know he's really there for you, right? They're always speaking to the version of you that God sees and not the version that you were. They're not speaking to the past you. They're always speaking to the future you, the you that God sees. And so I wanted to share this with you because there's a spirit of pride that keeps a lot of people down, a lot of people down. But we call it out right now in the name of Jesus and I speak to it and I say that you have to flee. You are not wanted. You are not wanted. And Lord, I ask that you send your spirit of humility into your children's hearts so that they may receive more grace from you. More grace to go where it is that you called them to go, Lord God. Give them a revelation of where they're at and a revelation of where you're trying to take them. Give them a revelation of who they are in you so that they come to themselves and say, wait a minute, there's much bread in my father's house. We know that you rain bread from heaven to your children who were in the wilderness, Lord God, because that is the, that's just the God that we serve and there's no lack of it. There's no lack of it. The kingdom of God is not depleted by demand. Yet there is lack in the earth. There is no lack in the realm of the spirit. There is no lack in the kingdom. And so we know that we can always go to you, even though we may have lost who we were before. We were lost. We did not know. When you're, I'm telling you, y'all, when you're in a place of lack, there are things that you do that you just wouldn't simply do if you knew that you served a God who did not lack anything. In a mindset of lack, you'll go get yourself in a ton of bondage because you think that you have to tie your soul to something to borrow something, right? You'll think that you'll think that you have to do things that you don't have to do, but you serve a God of abundance, right? You'll sign your life away. You'll sign you'll sign your precious time away. Because you think that there's a lack out there, but there's not. Our Father says all you have to do is ask and you shall receive. 
if you would just humble yourself before him and say, all right, Lord, I've done it my way. What is your way? Get in his word and he shows you there. He shows you there. So I love you all. I'm always praying for you. I know that as a result of this message, there are many of you who will go before the Lord today and you'll humble yourself and you'll say, Lord, I thought I had it figured out, but I didn't. And because you have humbled yourself before you, he will make all grace abound towards you. He'll give you the grace to complete all that it is and make it right, right? He'll make it right. All that it is he's called you to do and he'll work it all out, turn it all around for your good. He'll make all grace abound towards you. So I love you all. I know this message will cause many of you to humble yourself before the Lord, bring it to his feet, and as a result, watch his grace between, begin to work in your life and be patient, right? Be patient in the Lord. A lot of times when the Lord is giving you grace, it means he's given you an allotted period of time. The enemy will come in and try to rob you of that grace period by making you think that you have to rush to get things done, right? That God isn't gonna move for you, even though that things are taking longer than usual. You have to move in with Philippians chapter four, verse seven and say, no, no, no. It is God who's given me the peace of God and it is guarding my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus, right? Shut out the voice of the enemy. Understand that nothing will happen in your life. Once God's get it, once God get in the mix, nothing will happen in your life that's too late or too early it's always right on time working for your good so i want to leave you all with that today i know this message has blessed many of you i want you to comment below if it has i always like to open the opportunity for those of you who the lord has put it on your heart to put seed in really good ground this is the the uh, perfect place to do it there are many other ministries that have really good ground great ground for you to sow into but i will say make sure that it is good ground and that that minister or that ministry is standing with you for your harvest. They're standing with you for your harvest and they believe in seed time and harvest time. Principles, I pray over every single seed and as a result of it, the Lord is able to move through your seed, your seed speaks to God and do miraculous things in the lives of his children because he'll always stand on and honor his principles. His word never returns back to him void, never. Genesis chapter eight, verse 22 tells us that as long as the earth remains, there'll always be a harvest. And I call it forth for you all every morning, every single morning. I know that there are many of you who are believing in God to do wonderful things in your life or you have something very specific in mind and you're wanting to put your work, your work with your faith I'm telling you, put a seed behind it. It's putting that prayer request on speed dial to the Lord because it's showing God that I'm willing to put my faith and not just my faith, but back it up with, with works and put my resources. I'm sacrificing something. I'm laying something on the altar and I'm sacrificing this thing for God to show you this is how much I trust you and have faith in you that you're going to bring it to pass. It speaks to God. It speaks to God. Hear me when I say that. I have many messages on that. You can check out the Kingdom Economy playlist. But if the Lord is speaking to you about sowing a seed, I encourage you to be obedient and do so. The link is below. And it's because it's not that the Lord needs your money, but it's that he's trying to get something back to you. Multiply something back to you. He's only going to move through the, his word, the words that he has spoken. And if he's ever speaking anything new, new to you or one of his servants, it's always going to align with his word. And so it's not that the Lord needs your money, it's that he's needing the sacrifice to get something back to you. What are you willing to put on the altar, right? And if it's not money, it's got to be something, whether it's your time, whether it's your energy, you have to sacrifice something. So I love you all. I'll leave you with that. There's many other resources below. Um, and I'll talk with you all in the next message.